Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate, JJ. So today we uh, we continue on with our um, our Maxitronic Sensor Robot 20. Uh, today we'll be doing uh, project number seven, uh, a shot in the dark one. So um, take over to the booth and we'll put the project together and then once that's done we'll pop over to the bench and we'll have a look at it. So let's get on with it. Here we are in the booth, ready to kick off on our project number seven, Shot in the Dark One. I'll throw it over to the book can and uh, we'll read the instructions. So uh, <clears throat> this is project number seven, Shot in the Dark One. What it does. How well can you see in the dark? Can you hit a target in the dark with the light from a, fr from a flashlight? This project lets you test your aim with your flashlight gun. If you hit the CDS cell target, the buzzer beeps and the LED eyes blink. After finishing the wiring, turn the control knob to apply power. Both the buzzer and the LEDs operate. Turn the knob counterclockwise until the buzzer is silent and the indicators go out. Turn out all the lights in the room, then from about 10 to 15 feet, Point a flashlight with a sharply focused beam at the robot. If your aim is good, the buzzer sounds and the LED lies, eyes light. How it works. If you hit the CDS cell with the light beam, its resistance drops and Q4, Q5 turns on. This causes electricity to flow directly from the base to the emitter of Q1. This is called a short circuit. Then Q1 turns off and Q2 turns on. Q6 also turns on. This enables the output of the A-stable multivibrator, <coughs> the A-stable multivibrator, to feed a signal to Q6. This transistor, in turn, sends a square wave voltage to the buzzer and its current to the LEDs. The buzzer sounds and the LEDs light. Without this circuit, the LEDs would light very rapidly it would appear that they were on at the same time. <clears throat> Even after the flashlight stops, Q2 is kept turned on because of the monostable vibrator. Even after you fire your flashlight gun, the sound and light continue for a few seconds. There you go. So, uh, let's pop you over here and let's, uh, let's wire this guy up. So we always start with one to three. I left that wire in there because um, that's always there. And then we've got two to five. So two to five is um, connecting the negative power terminal over to uh, one side of our, our control potentiometer. That's a, that's a variable resistor, of course. And then we've got five to 32. Now, 5 to 32 is uh, wiring in our, um, our Q1 uh, transistor. It's in our multivibrator, block 1 down here. This is the emitter, emitter that we're connecting to the potentiometer, the emitter of Q1. And then uh, 32 to 63. Now, 63 is Q5, and that's the emitter of Q5. Uh, that's uh, 32 to 63. And uh, if we look here on the, um, on the schematic, uh, Q5... Q5, oh, it's related to the, uh, it's related to the input to the A-stable, or the bi-stable. Nope, it's a mono-stable. Mono-stable multivibrator. Right. Anyway, it's, it's the input, it's the CDS, it's the part of the circuit that connects to the CDS cell. So that's Q5, pin 63. And then 63 to 38. So that's back over to uh, the emitter of Q2. And uh, the emitter of Q2 and Q2 is in our uh, multivibrator block one. 
Uh, now, what did we say was that type of multi vibrator? Uh, it's the mono stable multi vibrator. Yes. So this one's the mono stable multi vibrator, which can controls everything, and then this is the um, uh, a stable multi vibrator, which creates the tone for the speaker. Anyway, we've got uh, number 38 wired up and then it's 38 to 42. Now, 42 is the emitter of Q3 down here in the next multi-vibrator block. So let's just put that in. That's 38 over to 42. 42 being the emitter of Q3 in our second uh, multi vibrator. Now, this block is for controlling the uh, the speaker. It provides an oscillation that creates the tone on the speaker. And we got 42 to 48, just connecting all of our emitters together there. So, the emitter of Q3 is connected to the emitter of Q4. Um, there you go. And I believe that concludes that bunch of wiring. So then we're up to uh, 6 to 53. Now 6 is the wiper on our, um, on our potentiometer. It's called the control. It's this thing here. So uh, 6 to 53. 6 is here. And 53 is in our resistor block over here. Okay, so it's the 3.9K resistor that we're wiring in here. Number 53, 3.9K. And then we've got 7 to 15. Now 7 is the other side of our potentiometer. And 15 is our CDS cell. Now the CDS cell isn't polarized. So uh, there you go. All right, and then 8 to 65. 8 is our buzzer. And 65, uh, it's connecting over here to Q6. Now, I believe Q6, yes, Q6, Q6 is the, um, is the, uh, the transistor that controls the buzzer. It basically uh, allows the uh, output of the a stable multi vibrator to go through to the buzzer. So just to confirm, that was 8 to 65. So this is 8 and 65. Oh, no, blue's not quite long enough. We're going to go yellow. All right. 8 to 65. 8 to 65. And then 65 to 50. So that's just uh, putting in our 1K resistor here. <sighs> Connecting the... Uh, oh, by the way, that's the collector that we connected to Q6 to the, to the buzzer. That was the collector. And now we're going to go from the collector over to our 1K uh, resistor. And then we've got 9 to 18. 9 is the other side of our uh, buzzer. And 18, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, right. It looks like they're going to send the, um, the, the buzzer is going to get connected through the LEDs, which is pretty interesting. That means if, if there's a tone on the buzzer, it's oscillating, but the LEDs will oscillate so fast that they'll seem to stay on. I think that's what the instructions were talking about when they, they said um, the buzzer sounds and the LEDs light. Without this circuits, the LEDs would light very rapidly. It would appear that they were on at the same time. Hmm. 
I'm not sure what to expect. It. This looks like, well, we'll see, we'll see. So that was um, 9 to 18. We've got 18 to 4. 18 to 4. Okay, so that's, uh, that's bringing power in. So it's uh, our power switch. And we've got 4 to 14. 4 to 14. So that's back over to the other side of our CDS cell. <clears throat> of course, the CDS cell is a, uh, a variable resistor. And the resist resistance varies um, based on the amount of light that's on the, on the resistor. I believe that the light decreases the resistance. That's actually something that we could investigate when we get over to the bench. So, uh, 4 to 14, and then 14 to 29. Where is 29? Okay, that's the collector of Q1. Is that what we want? The collector of Q1. Hmm, that's not right. 4 to 14. And 14. To 29. 14. To 29. Collector of Q1. Of oh. I think maybe there's a mistake here in the in the schematic because it does say here that twenty nine Oh I see. Of course. Okay. It's it's not directly to the, yeah, of course, okay, good. My mistake. Nothing, nothing was wrong there. It was just confused, John. So we are taking 14 to 29, which is not directly connected to the collector of Q1. It's connected to the 1K resistor that in turn is connected to the collector of Q1. And that's how I got, that's the wire I got crossed there. 14 to 29. I, uh, I do try to understand this, uh, the circuit as we go along rather than just blindly connecting the points because it is my ambition to learn how electronics works through these uh, projects so uh, thinking never goes astray now we're wiring in uh, the um, the resistor that's connected to the collector uh, and we're connecting it to the resistor that's connected to the to the base. So that's 29 to 30. And then we've got 30 to 35, which is connecting the resistor connected to the base of Q1 over to the resistor that's connected to the collector of Q2. Of course, our transistors are labeled Q. I, uh, I forget what T, what does T stand for? They don't call them T for transistors because T stands for something else. Maybe a, um, maybe a transformer. I'm not sure what they use T for, but it's Q, Q for transistors. 35 to 39 and and then, okay, so that's 35 to 39. So that's connecting our multivibrators by the looks of it. 
So that's um, that's connecting multi vibrator block one over to multi vibrator block two. That's the uh, the one k resistor that's connected through to the collector of Q three. And then we're at thirty nine to forty. This is a, a similar um, wiring as we did above. So uh, again, this is connecting the the resistor connected to the collector <coughs> to the resistor connected to the base. Uh, we saw the analogous wiring uh, in in both uh, of the multi vibrators. Thirty nine to forty, and then we've got forty to forty four. Um, and that varies a little bit, doesn't it? It's not quite the same as what, what we did up here. Up here, I mean. So, we're connecting uh, 40 to 44, which is the resistor connected to the base uh, is connecting to the resistor on that's connected to the other base. So that's the base's of Q3 and Q4 <clears throat> and then we've got 44 to 45 so they're all hooked in that's the uh, the resistor that's connected to the collector of Q4 so the base and the collector of Q4 are connected via their resistors and the base and the collector of Q3 are also connected through their resistors and then the emitters are tied together and then sent off over there to the other multi vibrator all right, so that was 40, 45. Now we've got 19 to 20. Where is 19? Over here, it's one of the LEDs. And 20 is the next uh, uh, LED along. So that looks like those LEDs are going to be connected in series. Um, and that means that they'll both come on at the same time when they get powered. So that's 20. And then 21 to 49. 49 okay that's simple that's uh, the uh, the second LED over to the 1k resistor and following that 1k resistor through that comes over to uh, Q6 and uh, Q6 is the um, is the is the thing that controls the LEDs and the buzzer. Ah, what was that? Was it 19 to 20? No, where are we up to? 21 to 49. Just that's what we did, isn't it? And then we've got uh, 31 to 34. So 31. That's the one that's hard to see. That's the collector of Q1. 31, 34. Where is 34? Okay, so that's the collector of Q1 over to the resistor that's connected to the base of Q2. Okay. 31 and 34. <clears throat> And then we've got uh, 33 and 62. So that's the base of Q1. And 62. It's all the way over here. All right. So that's the, the base of Q1 to the collector of Q5. Now just looking over here, Q5, it's the part of the circuit that's connected to uh, the CDS cell. So when the, the C CDS cell basically controls Q5, then Q5 changes the state 
of the A-stable multi-vibrator. No, changes the state of the mono-stable multi-vibrator. 31, 62, 62 to 72. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. I wasn't expecting the electrolytics to be used. 62 to 72, but we are, we're wiring in uh, one of our uh, 10 microfarad capacitors over here. That's what 72 is, and then 72 to 74. Looks like we're gonna put <clears throat> both of the 10 microfarad capacitors in this circuit, there you go. I was expecting the resistors because I thought it would be a tone We'll see. Um, I've got 37 to 66. Now 37's over here and 66 is over here. So that's the collector of Q2. Over to the emitter of Q6. And then we've got 66 to 71, which is just wiring our, um, our electrolytic capacitor in over here. <coughs> And then 71 to 73. Interesting. So uh, these capacitors have been wired in parallel. Uh, and parallel capacitors increases the capacitance. <sighs> okay. And then we've got 41 to 67. Now 41 is over here. And 67. Ah, interesting. There we go. Okay. So, wow. We're using... Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so, so these electrolytic capacitors... That they're up here. They're connected in in uh, in the this multi vibrator, uh, which is um, the A stable multi vibrator. So these are the, are the um, these are the capacitors that make the circuit stay on for a short while after it gets activated. Uh, whereas these ones in the uh, in the uh, in the multi vibrator uh, over here, uh, these these capacitors are, are, are what's going to create the high-pitched tone. There we go. So we're actually using uh, a whole heap of capacitors in this circuit. Four of them. Two ceramic caps and, uh, and, and two electrolytic caps. So I was uh, just having a look here. So 41 to 67. There we go. 41 to 67 and then we've got 43 to 70 so 43 is the base of Q3 and 70 is another one of our uh, ceramic caps over here the 0 0.047 microfarad and 46 to 68. So 46 is the base of Q4. And 68 is another one of our ceramic capacitors. So I'll just do the other the other capacitor, which I believe is going to be 69. So that was 46 to 68. And then we've got 47 to 69. 47 to 69. 
I am interested in this. I just I want to try and get my head around how the capacitors are wired in. So we've got one capacitor which is connected to the collector of Q3 and the base of Q4. And then we've got the other capacitor which is connected to the collector of Q4 over to the base of Q3. So that's that's how the, uh, the that's how those uh, ceramic caps are wired in. They're wired in between the collector and the base of the same of the same. Oh no, no, not the same. Hang on. Okay, of the of the opposite transistor. So we've got the base of Q3 connected to a capacitor which is connected to the collector of Q4 and then vice versa we've got the collector of Q4 connected through to the base of, of Q4 sorry Q3 to Q4 okay okay fair enough I suppose I'll get better at, at that in time uh, 47 to 69 and then 69 to 55 that's wiring in our 10k resistor up here okay so this is 55 10k resistor connected to 69 which is our, our capacitor ceramic capacitor part of the a stable multi vibrator which creates the tone for the speaker yeah and then we've got 54 to 61. Okay, that's connecting over to Q5. So, uh, now again, Q5, Q5 is the detector. It's connected to the uh, to the CDS cell. And then there's just one last wire, 56 to 54. I don't think we've got any more white wires. Oh, no, there is one. That's what I need, just one more white wire. So just confirming that was 56 to 64. There we go. So that's our assembled circuit. So um, I'll pop you over to the bench and we'll have a look at it. Here we are on the bench. So uh, I'm just going to fire up our power supply. Now, where is he? Over here. So that's uh, positive there and negative. Let's turn it off before we connect the power. So that's set at 9 volts. And we'll turn him on. There we go. Okay, now we're going to throw the switch. Hmm. Well, that's not what I was expecting. Okay, we have uh, no output. So I suppose we'll have to check our wiring. Nothing's jumping out at me as wrong. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Just uh, confirming that uh, we got power. Alright, it's delivering 9 volts. 
Oh, there we go. Actually, when we uh, when I turn the power on, it's actually drawing uh, 20 milliamps. So um, let's see what our um, that looks like that resistor there is getting hot. Okay, so one of the resistors is getting warm. Not very warm. Probably warmed it up with my finger now by touching it. Okay. Well, I guess it gives us a bit of an opportunity to think through how this thing's supposed to be working. So just confirming that there's power there. And I've turned it on. It's drawing... It's drawing... 20 milliamps and it must just be one of the resistors getting hot because the buzzer is not sounding and the uh, and the LEDs are not flashing Dear me. Well, I'm stymied because uh, it seems to be all correct. All right, well, I'm going to have to buzz him out. So, let's do that. Uh, how are we going to do that? Got uh, this guy. We want to put him on... Uh, there we go. Continuity. There we go. Beep, beep, beep. Now, I'll just get the... Uh, get the instructions over here. And uh, I'm just going to turn this power off. I'll turn him off as well. All right, and we'll check our wiring. So we've got uh, one to three. It's not really a good connection. Seems a bit dodgy. Maybe this is the problem. I'm not sure. Let's put... Uh, one and two and let's see if that's made any difference no not yet all right well we'll keep going so we've got to buzz out uh, everything else so we've got two and five it's going to take the uh, insula insulation safety guards off these things. All right, uh, five to thirty-two. It's working. Thirty-two to sixty-three. It's working. Sixty-three to thirty-eight. And thirty-eight to forty-two. And 42 to 48. And then 6 to 53. And 7 to 15. <sighs> 8 to 65. And 65 to 50. Okay, and then 9 to 18, 9 to 18, and 
and then 18 to 4 and then 4 to 14 <coughs> 14 to 29 and then 29 to 30 and 30 to 35 and 35 to 39 35 to 39 okay 39 to 40 and then 40 to 44 40 to 44 and 44 to 45 <coughs> and then 19 to 20 19 to 20 and then 21 to 49 21 to 49 and then 31 to 34 31 to 34 and 33 to 62 and 62 to 72 where's 72? down here <coughs> 72 to 74 and then 37 to 66 37 to 66 and then 66 to 71 66 to 71 and then 71 to 73 okay 71 to 73 41 to 67 41 to 67 that's working and then 43 to 70 43 to 70 that's working 43 to 70 And then uh, 46 to 68, 46 to 68, okay. And then 47 to 69, we got uh, 47 to 69, that's working. And then 69 to 55, 69 to 55, and then uh, 54 to 61, 54 to 61, that's working. And the last one was 56 to 64. <laughs> That's great. So we had 56 connected to 54, and it's supposed to be connected to 64, of course. There was nothing connected to the base of Q6. So that explains that, doesn't it? I, uh, I got um, 54 and 64 mixed up. And our buzzing out actually solved the problem. Uh, and it turned out to be the very last wire. Isn't that funny? Wow. Okay. So let's try that again. We'll power up the circuit. We'll throw this on. There we go. And basically... Um, Yes, right, I see. Now I was expecting... Um, what was I expecting? I was expecting the, um, the monostable multivibrator um, to keep the circuit on for a little while after the sensor detected. Now look, I don't want to go and turn all the lights off in the room. <clears throat> so 
So we we seem to have um, we what well, what's that business where it, so in this mode it's uh it's turning on and off and on and off and on and off and presumably that's controlled by these electrolytics. We take that off; it just goes on full time. Yeah, I don't understand. I do not understand. Oh. Ah. I uh, I can't account for what's happening here. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't think it's working the way that it said it would. <clears throat> Let's read it again, huh? So it says, um, how well can you see in the dark? Can you hit a target in the dark with the light from a flashlight? This project lets you test your aim with your fl flashlight gun. If you hit the CDS cell target, the, beep, the buzzer beeps and the LED eyes blink. After finishing the wiring, turn the control knob to apply power. Both the buzzer and LEDs operate. Turn the knob counterclockwise until the buzzer is silent and the indicators go out. Counterclockwise. But if you turn it, if you turn it counterclockwise, the buzzer comes on and the indicators go on. So if you want the, uh, if you want the, uh, if you want the buzzer to go silent and the indicators to go out, you have to turn the control knob clockwise, not counterclockwise. So maybe that's just wrong. Then uh, turn out all the lights in the room. Well, I'm not going to do that because there's so many lights in here. It would take me half an hour to turn them all off. Uh, then from about 10 to 15 feet, point a flashlight with a sharply focused beam at the robot. Okay. If your aim is good, the buzzer sounds and the LEDs light. There we go. Okay. So, um, we've got it tuned well enough that if I, if I use the flashlight, okay, so the flashlight turns it on, but it doesn't do what it says, does it? Uh, if you hit the CDS with the light beam, its resistance drops. Okay, so that's telling us, I asked earlier um, how the uh, resistance was related to the light, and the answer is, according to the instructions here, that uh, the light decreases the resistance. We might actually just test that ourselves uh, in a minute. So, uh, you turn the, turn the light on the CDS cell and uh, Q5 uh, turns on. This causes electricity to flow directly from the base of the emitter, which is here, to Q1. Okay. Uh, this is called a short circuit. Really? Uh, the emitter of Q5 over to the emitter. So what else is connected here? We've got the the base. Ooh. Yeah. Um, 
the bass. Ooh. That's funny, isn't it? When I uh, I touch the bass of Q1, it actually it's enough to. Uh... Yeah, fascinating. Okay, uh, Q1 turns off and Q2 turns on. Q6 also turns on. This enables the output of the A stable multi vibrator to feed a signal to Q6. This transistor, in turn, sends a square wave voltage to the buzzer and current to the LEDs. Oh, I see. The, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to um, have a look at what's happening here on uh, on one of our LEDs um, because I want to see um, if they're getting a square wave, the same square wave that the uh, that the buzzer is getting. So let's try that, shall we? Now we've got to make sure the ground cables are connected uh, correctly. Oh dear me, there we go. Alright. Alright, well, now what I'm going to do is just hit that with some light and then uh, auto tune the. There we go. Let's try again. Anyway, that was uh, that was pretty similar, wasn't it? Our uh, our trigger is not real good. I'm not sure if I can move that trigger. That's not that one, and that one. There we go. There we go. That's triggering much better, isn't it? Now look, um, the yellow, the yellow. Can I pause that? How do I pause? Uh, yeah, there we go. All right, sorry about the racket. It's a bit annoying how that buzzer makes all that noise. All right, so I, I've paused the, um, the oscilloscope and I'll just tell you what we're looking at. So we've got the yellow is connected across the LED and the blue is connected across the buzzer. What I, what I wanted to see is that the LEDs are actually receiving the square wave and in fact they are and that's what I thought would be happening. You can see in the circuit here that uh, um, the Q6, the collector of Q6 six, um, uh, uh, allows uh, current to flow through the um, buzzer and through the LED uh, with the LEDs which are wired in series, but those uh, they're, they're they're all powered um, through through uh, Q6, which oscillates because of the the output here of um, of the of the A stable multi vibrator. So this is flip flopping between states, and when this state uh, is active. Um, then uh, the collector drives the base and when there's something on the base that enables all this um, that's good so it's good when you have a theory about how things work and you correct so on the oscilloscope 
uh, just to just to say it again, um, we're sending a pulse through the LEDs as well, and they seem to be on, um, uh, but they're not now. This this capacitor network over here on this part of the circuit that seems to be related to when they all flash on and off. You you can tell because the LEDs and the buzzer all go off together. Um, and I don't quite understand uh, that. I It did say, um, even after the flashlight stops, Q2, now Q2, that's this guy, uh, is kept turned on because of the monostable multivibrator. Even after you fire your flashlight gun, the sound and light continue for a few seconds. Now we didn't see that, did we? Look, there we go. Turn it off and it goes off straight away. But it said that it would continue for a few seconds, but it doesn't continue for a few seconds. Is that to do with the tuning of this thing? I don't know. Maybe if I turn it all the way down. I don't understand. Now, we did buzz out everything and we confirmed every single wire, unless I've put in some sort of a short circuit somewhere. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't, it says, even after the flashlight stops, Q2, this is Q2, is kept turned on because of the monostable multivibrator. Now Q2, it's all connected. Just want to see where these go. Let's have a look at the um, at the schematic again. So the um, the ten microfarad electrolytics are connected to the collector of Q two, the collector of Q two. Yep, that's right. They're both connected there. And then on the other side, they're connected to Q5. That's not right, is it? Uh, just want to check where 72 connects. 72 to 74 and 72 to 62. Well, it's wired correctly according to this. And then that hops over. That was interesting. If I touch that. Yeah, right. Uh, okay, that seems to be... It's Q5... Uh, Q5... Collector. Okay, so that connects. That connects everything in there. I'll tell you what I might do. Is just disconnect uh, our probes because I have seen the probes affect circuits before. Okay, so that did change things. Okay. Now, if we hit in, oh, there we go. I don't understand. So, 
So that on off behavior, that must be related to these electrolytics. It just must be. But uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing I'm not seeing what it said we would see. <sighs> well, at least we got the circuit behaving right after we figured out that problem with 64 and 54. So so we got the circuit working. Okay, I'm going to wrap this one up there. Um, it wasn't a total victory, was it? Um, we 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 had um, we had a problem with the circuit. Um, that was my fault because I wired pin forty six instead of pin fifty six, and of course it was the very last wire for us to check. Uh, anyway, we found that problem, and then we got the circuit kind of working. We discovered that. In fact, the LEDs were connected to the piezo buzzer, so they were actually getting the, the pulsed width, the pulse width modulated power. Um, but you couldn't tell the LEDs just appeared to be solid on when the buzzer was on. But then there was the the the, the matter of the oscillation. Now that did happen, um, but that's not what I was expecting. I I, I wasn't expecting that oscillation. I was expecting the um, the uh, circuit to come on. It says here, even after the flashlight stops, Q2 is kept turned on because of the monostable multivibrator. <sighs> even after you fire your flashlight gun, the sound and light continue for a few seconds. And we definitely didn't get that behavior. And I did try tuning it. Um, a number of times and that's just not how this circuit behaved so I I don't know if I've made a mistake or if um, the, 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 the schematic is is not correct um, you know I, I don't know I don't understand like I think I've got my head around the a stable multi vibrator that's pretty common we've used we've seen it a number of times in this book, uh, the the uh, monostable multivibrator. This is the first time we've seen one of those, um, and the book says that it will behave differently to how we witnessed it behave. Um, so I'm just going to put a question mark on that. I don't entirely understand what we've seen here in this project, um, but there are more projects to come. So I suppose we'll just keep on keeping on, and maybe maybe things will become clear in the future. Now the next project is project number eight, shot in the dark two. So um, let's see, uh, let's see what that's about. A quick squiz makes it seem like this does not have another monostable multivibrator. It's another a stable multivibrator, but it's not the high pitched one. It's a flashing LEDs one. Anyway, if you're interested in the next project, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.